What's up guys? Hello and welcome to Bite Size Security. My name is Jimmy and today I'm going to be looking into another technical video and namely we're going to look at the box called UpDown which is a Linux box and this one is supposed to be a bit harder. It's a medium box and so we're going to get right into it. Before I begin I would like to take a moment to thank you all for the um, support that I've received it's really nice to see that uh, my content is being received in a in a good way and that some people are watching it even though it is highly technical and doesn't really appeal to everyone but with that being said um thank you and i'll get straight into the box so as usual i'll make a directory called updown for the project We'll go into it and then we'll create the four folders as usual. We'll create enum, uh, enum, loot, privesc, and exploit. We'll go into enum and as usual, we'll create two paints and then we'll do scan. We'll take our IP, which we have here, scan, and then call that initial. And up top, I'm going to run sudo auto recon uh, dash dash dear buster tool is that working yes dear buster tool go buster and then our ip while that is running i'm going to look at the notes i have already created the folders and i will now create the notes uh, inside of info which is here okay that is a bit set up wrong but that's okay i'll change that later inside of here i will create the usual headings which is general information and then we have initial nmap and initial rust scan and map like so then i will paste let me just clean initial and call it rust scan remove initial and then open the root of our project like so inside of here I will go into the results, scan, and I'll take the end map as usual. This now is becoming second nature, and that is exactly what we want it to be, so that the methodology just gets more and more refined over time. From our ROS scan, we can see, and from our end map as well, by the way, we can see that we have two ports port 22 and port 80 HTTP. So let's go and take the notes on those. Like so. And map, copy that and paste it here. So we can then go into the scan, take the nmap output and put it here. I will refrain from doing SSH audit because I can already see the banner here and now after a certain amount of time we know that SSH is not really the point the point of entry and so we can just ignore that for now. In case that is wrong we will of course cycle back. Let's move straight to HTTP. So let's close this and open HTTP. So as usual we'll create the different headers Co, nikto what web go buster ff because the auto recon runs go buster but i like to run ff on my own not because i don't trust go buster of auto recon but because i like to be thorough and do these things myself then screenshot <laughs> and that is it okay. 
let's collapse Carl. Let's take Nikto. And then the end map we have. Let's take Go Buster. And inside of Go Buster, I can see that we have two directories dev and index.php. And then what else? Screenshot we will take ourselves. And what web? Let's just make sure we have everything. Yes, we do. Okay, so let's quickly go through these and see what we are working with. So we got GoBuster, Nikto, the usual stuff. Dev, this might be interesting indeed. Uh, and map. We have an end map. This might look set up. Nothing too interesting here, except for the directory that it finds. Okay, let's just go and browse to this directory. So HTTP forward slash forward slash and then the IP. Okay, we have Burp running. In fact, let's open up Burp right away. Burp is running. So, okay, the first thing I notice is that site is up. .htb is the name of this IP address. So, what can I do? I open up hosts and I take the IP and I write site is up. .htb up down the HTB as well because it is called up down and that is it for now there you go and then now <clears throat> we can browse to site is up HTB okay now we have inside of our notes Now it's correct. Okay, so we have all the notes taken, all the enumeration, but we are on the website. So now let's fingerprint the website. What can we do? So let's start with, um, sorry, we start with FF because we already have GoBuster, but we want to do FF more correctly. And we're going to run two scans. Okay, before we do that, Given that auto recon is running as root, as usual, we're going to uh, we're going to change the permissions of this folder. So we're going to do sudo chown recursive dynamo dynamo, and we're going to do that on the entire directory of this box, like so. Then we're going to do ff dash u http site is up and yeah, hack the box and then fuzz. We're going to fuzz from I believe what is best. One second, 
collapse, collapse, collapse. I believe it's best we just fuzz from dev because if we do recursive, then it's gonna go through the entire word list first and then go into dev and then do that again. So it's gonna take a lot of time. So let's just start straight from dev. It's It just saves a lot of time if we do it that way. So dev and then fuzz. I'm gonna use the word list opt sec list uh, discovery web content and then lowercase medium we're going to do the a dash i see to clean up the first uh, set of words in the word list and then we're going to pipe that into t and then that we're going to save into results the scans tcp 80 and we're gonna call it instead of GoBuster, we're gonna call it FF and dev because we're not fuzzing everything, we're just fuzzing from dev. While we do that, let's just run that. We're also gonna do a subdomain uh, um, subdomain brute force. So we're gonna do HTTP site is up a HTB H and then host and then fuzz site is up with HTB and then the word list opt sec list discovery DNS and then the top 1 million 5,000 and then um, here as well we're going to do dash IC and T and then output and then again we're going to save it nice and neat into that folder but here we're going to call it subdomain and we're going to run that too this now should normally give us an exactly an error like this and basically it is showing us all of the contents of the word list and all of the results with the size 1131 so what we can now do is filter for that size so dash f filter s size 1131 and now it will filter those out. So now it will only show the subdirectories that are, do not have that size. Let's run that. While that is running, I can already see that we have a Git folder. Now, this is interesting because .git is usually not in this word list, right? And that is because in the past I've done boxes where the directory was .git and there was a hole in my methodology I would never have found those unless I had used different word lists. And I thought, okay, let's just put .git into my word list because I use directory lowercase medium quite a lot. So it makes more sense to just add .git into that word list. And so now I find folders like that. So this is great. The hole in my methodology before is now sealed. So we found .git. It seems like we're not going to find anything else. Ah, let's just leave that running. But we have dev and we have .git. So let's go into this. Okay, let's take some notes. So ff. So we have directory. Directory brute force. And we have the host subdomain brute force. Okay, and then here we're going to paste this, and we're also going to take the command that we use to execute.
what why is it doing that there you go Oh no, so this is for the for that one here. With this function, with this command, we found that subdirectory. And then here, let's just cancel that for now. With this command, we found those directories. And we have dot git. Interesting. Because building up on that last time as well, um, when you have a directory that is .git, there's a tool called git dumper that we can use. And okay, let's say, let's first take the screenshot and then continue. Let's be correct with this. There you go. Quick word on the website. I believe that's just a simple self-explanatory website. You enter a URL and it will then say if it's up or down, basically. The debug mode, let's see what the debug mode does. Let's do server. And then thousands debug mode okay I receive a request and yes okay so it just prints out the request the response sorry from my server so this would be my Python and yeah nothing too special now we found dev dot git and having found that, we can use git dumper, as I was saying. And here we can specify the website where it is and then a directory where I would like to dump all of that. So let's use uh, git dumper with this URL. And then in here, we're going to create git dump like so it will then fetch all of these files and just dump them on my local disk and then i can just uh, check them out in my uh, sublime text let's go back here like this um, what can i say <clears throat> uh gets just further enumeration. We have found a dot git directory. We can download all of its contents using git dumper. So that opened here. Snip, so it's just a lot of outputs just to show basically that I dumped everything. And now let's analyze. Minimize this. Maximize this and let's go into git dump. Okay, so we have a couple of files. Set env if no case, special dev only for dev required header. Okay, so I believe this sets a 
header that you need in your request so that you can access whatever whatever um, web server. Most probably this is for the subdo uh, subdirectory, which we have not gone to yet. Let's see. Dev site is up. So. Oh. Okay, so we found a subdirectory, a subdomain, but we haven't added that to our hosts yet. So let's do that. Dev set us up, hack the box. And now let's try and browse to it. Site is up, hack the box. There you go, forbidden. Yeah, now it makes sense that we would have that header. Because I was thinking, where would that header be belong to if we are allowed to go everywhere? But then I remembered that we have the subdomain. So let's paste that here. We are not allowed to browse the dev site is up for hack the box uh, subdomain. And then Let's also make another one and say git dump. In fact, we can we can say that there and then here. Kids dump and then we'll take this like that, and then here we'll create these um, headers for these files that we have found. So we found .ht access. Uh, admin.php changelog.txt checker.php and index.php The style sheets I'm just going to ignore for now. And then let's take this and paste it here. So this most definitely is a required header to access the uh, dev subdomain. So let's just do that really quick. Let's go into proxy, proxy settings. And then here we can add a, so match and replace rules and then you add a header and you say um, special dev only for dev, there you go. And then just bypass set and if no case. Uh, let's just quickly take a screenshot of that. Like this. There you go. 
So here we can paste that there. And now normally we should be able, if we run this through burp, we should be able to browse this website. And there we go. Let's put this here and say, we are now able to browse of the wheel. So we can now continue with this. So here we have a upload functionality and we have a change log which I believe is also part of those nodes. We can close this. Let's continue looking here. We have admin PHP. So it just gives a access denied page for the dev for the admin panel. So basically here it says admin panel. And if you don't have that header, then it just gives you access denied. Then you have change log, which is just an admin leaving some notes about what has to be changed. So new admin panel and remove upload function, which is option, sorry, which is what we see on the page. And then multi-threading, multi-threading for faster version, that's something else. Then we have checker.php. What does that do? This is the code for that page. So is the website up? Uh, it will check. So, if the request is a post, then it will check. So if we ups uh, upload a file, then it will check the file size. It will check the extensions. These are not allowed. It will then create an uploads directory with an MD5 sum, MD5 hash, and it will upload that file onto that directory. It will then bunch, uh, do a bunch of stuff with that file and delete the file after. Let's note that this is a for loop. So for every file that you upload, it will delete it after. Okay. Let's just stick to that for now like this. Take this, paste that there, change log, take this, and paste that there, checker. Paste that there. Then index.php, this is only for developers. Uh, does it say that here? Yeah, it says that here. Okay, so basically it includes a page and um, so these are a couple of pages that it will, uh, it, it immediately defines the access to these kind of pages as denied because these are, okay, so includes the include function usually is vulnerable to local file inclusion. And if you exploit the local file inclusion, for example, you will want to go to Etsy password by traversing to Etsy password. And so that is blocked as well as all of these other folders. Okay. And it will also include the page and then append PHP at the end of the page, no matter what. Okay, so even if you were to traverse, to do a traversal to a file, an internal, a local file, you couldn't do Etsy password because it would append PHP behind that and then would make it void. 
or else it will include checker.php, which is this code. Okay. So, let's go back here. Let's upload a file and see what happens here. Because we cannot upload PHP, we cannot upload zip, we cannot upload any type of archive file. Let's fuzz for what we can upload. And in the past, one archive file that I, for example, do not see here, there's two, is, so when you cannot upload zip, I've learned that you can do .0xdf, which is non-ASCII, maybe that will work, or a PHP archive. But let's just see. Is that is that already okay so let's say touch test dot text touch test of PHP and let's just upload those mm. the box boxes up down uh, you know and let's say test.php let's duplicate and go into the uploads folder and as we said before there's that md5 hash okay and the file is deleted as we saw here So let's try and upload test.php. We know it's not allowed, but let's see what it says. Extension not allowed. Okay. So let's try and do zip test.zip and test.text. Zip. Not allowed. So let's do uh oxdf because this replaces zip the so let's see file it's still a zip archive i don't remember where i learned this but it's, it's actually insane it's amazing from now on so whenever you cannot upload a zip file you can <laughs> simple as uh so this should work let's see and let's, by the way, also open burp. Uh, history. There you go. Oh, that didn't work. Upload here. Let's go here again. Let's take this to repeat as well. And then let's try and find the file. So if we upload a 0xdf zip file, the file does not get deleted. This is very interesting. but it is not a text file. Why is it not a text file? Okay, let's try and zip text, test.zip, no, that's uh, zero xdf and enter test.php. Can I upload a PHP file within that zip? Let's see. Uh, 
and let's go into repeater. Let's go into the uploads. Oh no, let's not do that here. Okay, so that file is also still there. Let's try and upload. So if we can upload an archive file like this one, let's try and do a file inclusion with a a local file inclusion. Let's try and exploit that include uh, function. But we will use a um, a wrapper. It's a, a, a stream wrapper. What's it called again? Let me take my notes and say this correctly. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we could we could exploit the local file inclusion by using a a wrapper, like for example, data or data semicolon slash slash or file. Sometimes you can use these for wrappers, and here I think we can use PHP a PM far, so a PHP archive wrapper. So LFI. Archive wrapper. Let's start that into Google. So yeah, we can include the page and instead of using PHP, we can use the archive file. So it will include the entire uploads folder with this file as well. And that might strip it of the OXDF. It's because if we use OPFR, then we are inside of that archive and it will then strip the, the extension .0xdf and then append PHP, which we have here that should work let's try it uh, let's see so we upload this check it let's go back ah, here There you go. And then here, we're going to say page equals far like this, and then uploads, and then let's do uploads and then take this and then what did we say test dot o x zero x d f and then test and we'll leave just test because we are already in the php archive and so we don't need to append the uh, we don't need to append the extension because the side itself will do that for us. And this worked. Okay, that worked. OK, 
Okay, perfect. So what can we do? We can now test this by writing something into this test.php. Let's try PHP uh, like this and then write echo. Hello world. And close it like so. And then we'll say zip test dot zero xdf and then test dot php. There you go. And we can upload this. Not there, but here. Like so, seems to be down. Okay. And then what can we do? Let's duplicate this and go into uploads. This one, close this and append it here. Did this work? Oh, okay. There's nothing there anymore. Perfect. Let's try that again. We'll upload this like this. Check. Then we go into web. We open the uploads file. We look for the hash. Then we go here. And then we know that we will use the LFI with our wrapper on the uploads. We'll, we'll, we will then include the uploads folder inside of the archive with the hash of the one of the folder that was just created from our newest upload test.oxdf because that's the zip the arc the compressed file that we just uploaded and test without the extension that should work and say hello world and it does yes okay so we are able to execute code so let's take some notes of this this is already exploit so what have we done we are able to upload files to the web server those files are usually deleted right away unless we upload a compressed file like a zip file Dash zip is not allowed so we can upload alternatives oxdf comes to mind And indeed, we are able Archive. 
Uh, let's take some screenshots of this. upload and we can see that our file is not deleted this way our file is not deleted okay and we can now exploit the LFI vulnerability by using a PHP archive Find a, I'll find a resource to the PHP archive wrapper, wrapper for my notes later. Um, we can now exploit the LFI vulnerability by using the uh, PHP archive wrapper. There you go. This way. that it worked. This I can close, I don't need that no more. Okay, let's take this a step further and try and find the PHP info. So because every time I find, I get code execution on a PHP website, the first Thing you want to do is execute a reverse shell but you cannot do that you first have to have uh, find php info and see which functions are disabled because uh, inside of the php info file there can be um, rules of files that can be accessed and files that cannot be accessed so now let's try and take this a step further like i said and write php info into this file and upload that. Uh, you know what? Let's call this. Let's go back like so and then say touch uh, info dot oxdf. And inside of here, we can write like this, PHP, PHP info, like so, and then close that. Is that correct? Hmm. Why is it not colorful? Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Sublime text is bugging. Let's try and upload this. Oh, I know why. <laughs> so move info info.php, that's why. And now it should be all nice and colorful. There you go. That was my mistake. I'm losing concentration, it's getting late. Um so now we can say zip info.0xdf we'll take the info php and now we have this file we can now upload this check and then on burp as before we're going to upload we'll take the md5 sum hash put it there change this to info and change this to info as well is the file not there anymore no it's not there anymore is there so let's do that again and there we go we have a PHP info file and so inside of here the first thing we should do let's take this and open it inside of the browser this um, the first thing we ha here have to do is check for disabled functions oh, let's just type functions because the amount of hours I've spent trying to upload reverse shells just to find out and learn that you always have to check for the disabled functions because those are your reverse shell cannot execute if you're using one of these functions. And so there's a tool that will help us find out very quickly which function is still allowed. And we are going to use this tool. Let's take some notes. Um, So info.php instead of executing hello world we have now executed php info Like so, and we got the PHP info page. Let's take a screenshot. And this tool is called Defunk Bypass. So we will use Defunk Bypasser. find out what functions we are allowed to use to execute a reverse shell. So let's do that. Let's open a second pane, go into tools, defunk, and then Python, is it? No, it's Python 2. Two point 
0.7 like so okay and we can now we can now give it this link and it will go through it and tell us the function however that won't necessarily work because if you remember we have a special header and that code of defunct bypass doesn't have that header so it will technically get a permission denied so we have to modify the code of this um of this uh tool a bit so let's do that we'll open this directory and go inside of here and then we will find php at this the requests and here we can add oh sorry here we can ha add what is it headers i don't know how to add a header in python python 3 no no python 2 python add header request like so that looks correct let's try that let's try these because I don't like the single ones and let's do only for dev and here special dev and then most probably our file is no longer there so let's try and upload it again. Check. And then here we'll go and upload. We'll take this. We'll go here. That is correct. And so we'll do the same there and we can now take this and give it to our defunct bypass dash dash url and that worked okay so let's take a screenshot of this in here proc open is the allowed function so knowing this we can now look for a reverse shell proc open reverse shell We can now look for a reverse shell. Um, yeah, so this is a simple reverse shell. Probably can't use all of it because it's too heavy. Because here. The first check it makes is 10,000 kilobyte. So let's not do that. And this is the shell process. Let's take this part. 
and create our own reverse shell. Let's say we don't need this. Let's go back and go into exploits. And then we'll create touch ref.php. And then in Sublime, we'll open that. And then we'll say PHP. Okay, so we have the, sport, the shell variable, the pipes variable, the descriptor spec variable, and the pipes variable. Pipes, I don't really know what it is, but there's loads of. I don't really know how this works. Um, let me go read. Doesn't matter. Let's for now just go with this shell function and this as it is in the big river shell. This is just in case, um, in case we can't spawn the shell, but hopefully that won't be our case. So let's write a shell variable. We will say bash C and then in here we will go into ref shell take IP put it there 443 uh, yeah that was actually okay so let's take this one that let's put that here but this should work any mistakes mm. oh yeah let me close this there you go that should work okay so then let's zip it zip rev dot zero xdf rev.php and let's try and upload this let's listen on 443 uh, let's go on to here upload that no go into exploits upload this check then go back into burp check the uploads take the hash go here put the hash there say rev instead of info because we're no longer looking for the php info and also we're not running the info php info function but we're running a reverse shell so just rev without the um, extension and this should connect back to our machine and bam we have a reverse shell perfect so We have a reverse shell. How did we do that? We used this. Uh, we were able to execute a reverse shell. using proc open. Uh, 
like that. So we are now officially inside of the box. So we can, uh, for now, uh, close exploit and go into internal. Okay, so this was external. Oh, okay. So inside of internal, we can now create another node called enumeration. That was a bit of a brain freeze there. Enumeration. So here, let's start by cleaning up our shell as usual. So we'll say Python 3 um, hc. Wow. What is it again? Let's look at our my notes. Dash C imports. Yeah, exactly. Imports PTY. PTY dot spawn. Open brackets. Bin bash. And close that. There you go. Control C and then STTY row echo foreground and then export term and then X term 256 color bash. There you go. So let's go into the home directory. And let's say ID, who am I, if config, and where did I drop in into the web directory, but that's okay. There you go. Let's put this into our notes. So we are www data. There is another user called developer and then there's root. So let's go into info, no, loot. Let's go credentials, data. flags user.txt and root.txt uh, let's go into internal enumeration and start enumerating uh, what do we have here developer. Let's go into that folder. So we have a hidden SSH folder. So most probably we will be able to SSH in as developer at some point. We cannot read the user text file because uh, we are not in the developer group and the file was obviously created by root. Um, we have a directory called dev, which we can enter. So let's do that. Let's also take a screenshot of this. Okay. So inside of here, what do we have? We have two binaries, or what is this file? Uh, let's set it up. Uh, let's check everything. We have one ASCII text file and one binary. 
with the set UID bit set. This is, okay, this is important. Let's take another screenshot and explain. Um, so, we have a health binary that has the set UID bit set. This means that executing this binary will make it run as the owner of the file, which is developer. So the set UID bit is essentially something that you can set and if you execute this file it will run as the owner of the file we can run it we are in the ww data group but if we run it we run it as developer so if we are able to exploit this binary we will be developer sounds good now what is set is site is up dot uh, underscore test let's see And this is probably the code for that binary. Great. So looking at this code, I can already note one thing. It is Python 2. This is Python 2.7 code. And let's run it. Uh, site is up. Okay. We can inject Python codes, we can do command injection into Python 2.7. I've seen this recently in the Academy, Hack the Box Academy. So let's look for that. Python 2.7, um, command injection. And I think it was underscore import like this. Import OS command injection. Yes, exactly, like this, command. So import OS, and then instead of pop open, we can do system ID. Let's try this. Because if we are able to execute commands, the set UID will, uh, will be executed and it will be developer that executes it. So let's try that. That sounds like the way to go. Here we'll do system. And then here we will do ID. Let's take some notes. We can inject commands into Python. 2.7 by using import OS what is it dot system system uh, and then CMD so here comes the command that should work so let's do that and it did work okay so let's take a screenshot of this We can see that it 
shows us the ID. So what can we do? We could do a couple of things here. We can just run bash, actually. I was going to say uh, 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 reverse shell or something again, but no, we can just say bash, no? Oh, my bad. Let's copy this and paste it in here. Boom, that worked. As developer, as the user developer, and we have successfully escalated our privilege. So this will go into Privesk and then escalating from user data and here escalating from user developer. Going back to what we said before, inside of this folder we have a hidden SSH folder. We are therefore able to probably steal the ID, the SSH keys. So let's go into Privesk, touch ID RSA. Let's open it uh, here, like so, and then cat ID. RSA. Let's make this a bit smaller so we can copy it. Like this, and then make it bigger again. This we will also take and put inside our loot. ID SSH keys. Developer ID RSA. And having this, we can now give this the 600 permission, which is read and write, read, write, execute. Uh, let's see, schmod. Permissions cheat sheet six is six six six. So six would be write and execute, not read. No, sorry, read and write. So if you have six. Zero, zero, that would be four plus two is read and write for the user, for the group zero, so nothing, and for everyone also nothing. So we're just giving me, myself, uh, read and write uh, permissions. So let's do that. And then let's try and SSH into the box. Dash I. Uh, IDRSA developer ads and the IP is oh we never we never set it entry point uh, let's go here and so that is our IP Yes. 
and that worked. We are officially developer. So, Privesk, we can steal the SSH keys and connect as developer. Bam, okay, we are now developer. What now? Let's put this into a single pane. Let's call this developer, oh, and then let's call. Oh, let's just call that one developer. So ID, we are developer. Uh, we can now obviously cat user dot text. Although I'm not going to do that, but that is the hash. And let's say sudo dash l. Amazing. So we can run easy install as root. Uh, we can run as root as my lamp plugin. Let's go to to see escalate our privileges. Let's go to my favorite website. say easy install and indeed we have a way to escalate our privileges so let's click on sudo and let's just do if the binary is allowed to run a super user by sudo it does not drop the uh, elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system escalate or maintain privileges so let's try and do exactly this. Uh, we do not have to declare this variable and everything. So let's just do sudo the full binary and then do. Okay, now let's, let's just do it. Let's not try and be smart here. Let's just do it exactly how it tells us. Copy, paste, and boom. We are root. Pawns. We have successfully owned up down. Uh, let's go to root and we have root.text so if we cut this we can see that this is the root this has been up down a harder machine yes that was definitely harder it was all right though thank you guys for watching thank you for the continued support and i'll see you guys in the next video peace